Hi, welcome to yet another interesting video. Herein I will be talking to you in more depth about the hoist. We will be deep diving what are the components in a hoist are so that you can understand better what is a hoist. So tell me for any thing to move electrically, do you need a motor or not? Say yes or no. Come on, say yes or no. For any thing to move electrically, do you need a motor or not? Yes? Yeah. So typically in this particular case of a hoist, we are manufacturing electric wire rope hoist. So electric wire rope hoist means that it has to be an electrical device. Wire rope means the arrangement which is wounding is a wire rope. So you can see wire ropes over here. So, so electric wire rope hoist and hoist is typically a equipment which lifts up and down any load. So this is a typical electric wire rope hoist. Uh, there is a hook arrangement over here and you can lift load up and down by moving this hook block up and down. So for moving this up, uh, hook up and down what you need is a electric motor so this is the electric motor which is attached over here now simply using a electric motor to lift something up and down is not feasible you need to develop some torque to be able to lift that load okay so that torque is developed through a gearbox so in a hoist also this is the motor which is which one, when provided with electrical power moves in clockwise or anti-clockwise direction and it is coupled to a gearbox this is the gearbox it is coupled from here from inside it's basically a flange mounted motor here it is coupled to the gearbox and once the motor moves the gearbox moves now this is a four stage gearbox wherein the when the motor moves the gearbox internal moves and they produces the required torque the gearbox is coupled to a drum the drum is not very clear in this picture let me see if I can find some other photo where better in this also the gearbox the drum is not so you can see the drum here although this is the drum the gearbox is not very visible over here the motor is this the gearbox is somewhere here some this yellow thing which you can see is the gearbox the motor when when it moves it turns the gear pinions inside the gearboxes gearboxes is coupled to the drum <coughs> sorry <coughs> so once the motor moves uh, it gives power to the gearbox and in turn the wire rope moves in clockwise or anti clockwise depending upon the direction of motion either the wire rope which is this is some wire rope which is wound on it the wire rope moves up up or down i the wire rope either uh, dismantles from this drum wire rope drum or it reeves onto this wire rope drum if it reeves onto the wire rope drum then it is lifting up when it is unreeving from the drum it is going down the hook it will be going down so it will be moving in the lower direction so the principle is very simple you provide power to the motor which in turn moves the gearboxes which in turn moves the drum drum has wire rope on it which either uh, unreels or reels over the drum and depending upon the direction of motion the lifting hook will move up and down so this is the hoisting mechanism uh, it has two more parts one is the equalizing so here you can see there is a there is a structure over here inside there is a pulley it's not very clear over here and then the wire rope is wound on this drum it goes to the bottom block from here it goes from here to the equalizing from equalizing the wire rope goes into the equalizing sheaf this is the equalizing sheaf and from here it comes back to the bottom block this is the bottom block in this sheaf and then it goes and the, at the free end this is the free end clamp 
so this is known as uh, the reeving arrangement of the hoist this is how the wire rope is wound so it has basically the drum the equalizing and the bottom block or the bottom block uh, lower block arrangement so the lower block arrangement has two pulleys in this particular case the equalizing has one pulley in this case the wire rope as i explained goes from drum to the equalizing the sorry sheaf over here pulley over here goes back to the equalizing from equalizing other end goes from here goes to the free end clamp so this is how the reeving arrangement is so again the motor moves in clockwise or anti clockwise direction it gives power to the gearbox the gearbox internal moves it is coupled to the drum the drum moves either in anti clockwise or anti clockwise direction the reeving arrangement of the wire rope moves the hook up and down and hence the load moves up and down so it's a it's a simple mechanism the other part of the hoist is known as cross treble cross treble has these wheels attached to it and there is a this this particular yellow thing which you are seeing is the ct gearbox or cross treble gearbox and there is a cross treble motor uh, attached to it we give provide power to the cross treble motion so depending upon whether it is clockwise or anti clockwise it moves the gearbox the gearbox moves the wheel either in clockwise or anti clockwise direction and accordingly the hoist moves either in this direction or in this direction this is known as the cross treble motion of the hoist so this power is supplied through a pendant push button station let me see if i can see a pendant this is the pendant push button station a typical pendant push button station it has mh up mh down ct left ct right and then one or two more switches <clears throat> so basically if you press mh up the motor direction is decided and the lift the load is lifted up if you press down button the uh, load is um, lowered down if you press cross travel left so this will move in the left direction if you press right it will move in the right direction so this is typical arrangement of a hoist uh, in a hoist uh, you can see this this handle this is actually a brake over here so once the load is lifted let's say in this case as you can see the load is lifted once the load is lifted up and <clears throat> you want to let the load be hanging up there so what is it which is helping the load not to be lowered why is the load not falling down once it is being achieved at a particular level how the load is not falling down so it's basically because there is a break over here you can see this handle it's actually a brake over here which doesn't allow the motor shaft to rotate so it is mounted on the motor shaft it doesn't allow the motor shaft to rotate and hence uh, it doesn't allow the gearbox to move and hence doesn't allow the drum attached to it to move the whole system is jam packed so that it can neither be lowered nor nor be lifted so uh once we give the electrical power to this motor uh, simultaneously a power is given to the brake wherein the brake is released once the power is provided to the brake the brake release means now the motor shaft is free to rotate so the power has gone to the motor motor also the motor starts moving simultaneously power has gone to the brake which releases the motor shaft so this happens in split of a second the motor now starts uh, rotating which in turn rotates the gearbox and the drum starts rotating similar application is there for the cross treble so there is a brake over here uh, once the brake is applied it is the motor shaft cannot run cannot rotate uh, hence the gearbox cannot rotate hence these wheels are jam packed so you cannot even push and pull the hoist with hand it is so tight that you cannot pull and push so uh, that way it prevents the load from you know automatically going in this end of the let's say it's a taper down and a hoist is hang uh, hoist with load is hanging down uh, with load is hanging down so uh, it the hoist won't slip like this and even if in the case the load is hanging uh, 
because the cross travel brakes are activated. So this is a typical <coughs> example of a hoist brake. So in this particular thing, uh, this handle which you can see is the brake of the hoist. Uh, these small little handles which you can see are the brake sandal <coughs> which are preventing the cross travel motion to happen. So once the power supply is given to the motor, simultaneously the power supply is given to the brakes. So uh, brake uh, once energized releases the motor shaft and the motor in turn can rotate now. So um, <coughs> Uh, in this particular case, these are here are the equalizing sheaves inside these. The equalizing sheaves are mounted. So uh, from the wire rope drum, the reeving arrangement is such that uh, it goes to these pulleys and then to these pulleys and then back to these pulleys. So we'll be talking about the reeving arrangement little later uh, in other videos. So in a hoist, typically, as I explained. Uh, there is a hoist motor, the hoist gearbox, the hoisting drum, uh, hoisting drum as you can see over here, uh, the hoisting motor, the gearbox, then there is uh, cross travel wheels, uh, then the cross travel gearbox, the cross travel motor and the cross travel brake arrangement. Uh, these small little things, the blue colored ones are the limit switches. So we do not want uh, that in even in case of pressing the pendant button in the downward direction once the load touches the ground we do not want the uh, the motor to be running and the wire rope to be unbounded even if it is on the if it has touched the load so for that what we do is we uh, provide limit switches so limit switches are nothing but Positional once the uh, once once a striker hits this limit switch in this direction means it is unwound totally. Now it uh, it won't the limit switch will be activated and it won't allow the motor to run in this direction uh, further. It will allow the motor only to run in the opposite direction further. And for the and we do not want this load to to go up and touch this and. Uh, be an accidental situation so we do not want these kind of these pulleys to be um, uh, touching this uh, frame over here so for that again we provide limit switch this is the upper limit switch over here similar type of limit switch once the striker strikes this limit switch means the wire rope has come to the full upper end and hence uh, it's time that the motor should not be rotating further in this particular direction whereas it should be allowed to lower so this is the limit switch for that similarly we have cross travel limit switch uh, this is the limit switch the blue thing which you can see here uh, in this video in this uh, picture over here and in this hoist over here somewhere here uh, it is also shown uh, these are the limit switch cross travel limit switch this is a little bigger because it's a flame proof limit switch so again it has a lever arm there would be a striker on this path uh, somewhere at the end. Once the striker strikes this uh, limit switch arm, the limit switch is activated. So this hoist won't go, won't be allowed to go further in this direction, but it will be allowed to move in this the opposite direction. So uh, in the in the other direction also, there will be a limit switch over here. Uh, sorry, limit switch striker over here. Once that is activated with this lever. Uh, the hoist won't go further in this direction, but it can go in the other direction. The limit switches are an important part of a hoist because it prevents any accident which could happen due to any um, uh, operator's ignorance or any other uh, problem which might have occurred in the hoist. So basically, uh, again mentioning uh, about the parts of the crane, parts of the hoist, there is a hoisting motor, a hoisting gearbox, hoisting drum, the wire rope bound on it, uh, equalizing pulleys, bottom block pulleys, bottom block hook arrangement, uh, free end clamp, then the cross travel gearbox, cross travel motor, cross travel brake, cross travel wheels, then uh, up and down limit switches and the cross limit switches. Now this hole uh, is controlled by this control panel. So this is uh, the control panel. 
uh, you you once press uh, up button in this pendant uh, the contractors or review drive uh, will be uh, will will be on and will provide motor uh, power to the motor and to the brake simultaneously from this control button so this is a typical hoisting arrangement thank you for watching this video again i'll be coming shortly with the other videos where i'll be talking about the parts of cranes uh, both double cutter and single cutter thank you